And joining us now, Gerald Lefcourt. Uh, he's the uh, past president of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers and a famed criminal defense attorney in his own right. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Lefcourt, for coming in. Sure. Uh, if you were representing Joe Halderman right now, uh, what would you be doing? Well, I'd be preparing a case that sounds like uh, he was uh, doing a treatment on a potential screenplay article or what have you, uh, which uh, alleged all of the affairs uh, that uh, David Letterman supposedly had. And he wanted to know whether Letterman would rather buy it rather than see it in print. And uh, by the way, I find this not unusual. There have been freelance journalists who've done precisely that. And if you're rich and powerful, sometimes you'd rather buy it than see it in print. But doesn't that sound like blackmail? Well, you know, it's a fine line. And again, it's going to turn. The devil is in the details. What was actually said on these tape recordings that supposedly occurred between Letterman's lawyer and Mr. Haldeman? And whether that makes out blackmail, it is a little unusual to ask for a check, I might say. I mean, blackmailers would probably ha you know, well, you know, some, rather have something hidden. But some alleged criminals, they do stupid things, as you well know. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like Mr. Haldeman, as experienced he is in journalism and being a, a producer, uh, I don't think that that sounds like he would be very stupid. If you had a bet now, Mr. Lefcourt, would this go to trial or will there be some sort of out-of-court settlement? You know, I think it'll probably settle out of court. The reason is I don't think David Letterman wants the dirty laundry spread out uh, for the world to see. You know, he's gotten away with the way he's announced it so far. But what is going to happen when he undergoes cross-examination by a real lawyer? Uh, and all of this stuff could come pouring out and could hurt him as bad as it hurts Haldeman. But it could hurt the women, too, that were involved in these sexual relations. I'm sure he doesn't want to hurt them, and I'm sure they don't want this thing to go forward and uh, have to uh, start giving testimony. Something tells me it's not over in the sense that there may be some of those women uh, who are upset already at the fact that he has talked about other women and implicated them. The media will be all over trying to find out who they are. Maybe these women are going to approach him and ask for settlements. Would that be called blackmail, but, too? But can yeah. David Letterman tell the, uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, the, the, the district attorney, Robert Morgenthau, in this particular case, what to do? Morgenthau said the other day, New York will not tolerate the coercion or extortion of anyone, be the victim, rich or poor, famous or anonymous. The law prohibits conduct like the defendant's and attaches severe penalties to it. We intend to enforce the law. So the question is, can David Letterman tell Morgenthau whether or not to prosecute this case? You know, Mr. Morgenthau is one of my favorite prosecutors of all time. He's had a wonderful career. But here you have an important uh, figure in our society who maybe would say to the district attorney, you know what, I've already been victimized once. I don't want to be on that witness stand. I don't want to be victimized twice because I know that the lawyers for this guy are going to try to make me look horrible. And wouldn't it be better for everyone if it was resolved with some kind of a disposition that gets him to admit misconduct, but on the other hand, saves me uh, the trouble of going up there and being cross-examined? Because Halderman is facing 15 years potentially in prison. Do you think an out-of-court settlement could avert going to prison at all? I think it's possible that uh, ultimately down the road, rather than have Mr. Letterman undergo this onslaught, which he would certainly experience, uh, that maybe a disposition could be worked out where perhaps Mr. Haldeman pleads guilty to something, gets probation, he has a clean record. Uh, you know, it was almost out in the open in the sense that he was asking for a check. I don't know what the real facts are, and I don't want to prejudge them. But I could see a disposition of well, no jail. If you were representing Halderman, and I know you're not, what would you ask a David Letterman on the stand? I would ask him about every single thing that has happened with all the women under his control, because he's the boss, what he did in order to make those women have sex with him, put him through the ringer. Why would the judge allow that? Because it may become relevant, A, because there may be things in the material that we don't know or exist yet, namely the so-called treatment or the tapes, which makes that relevant, 
or the defendant himself may take the witness stand and testify to that. And every time somebody testifies, their credibility is an issue. And judges usually give quite a bit of leeway to defense attorneys in cross-examining the alleged victim of a crime. He has pretty good representation, uh, Mr. Halderman, right now. I assume you know his attorney. I do. I know him very well. I've actually tried cases with him. Uh, he's very experienced and very knowledgeable. And I'm sure Mr. Letterman would not want to be in a courtroom with him. On that note, uh, we'll leave it. Gerald uh, Lefcourt, thanks very much for coming in. You're welcome. Your breath, uh, your heartbeat, uh, the size of your pupils, and more new security screening technology that some say simply goes way too far.